Good evening. Hope that you're having a good week so far. I hope that you are brimming with joy. When people ask you the question, is your cup half full or half empty? I hope that you, like David in Psalm 23, can say, my cup runneth over. I hope that you're filled with the joy of the Lord and ready to get into God's word this evening. Let's open together in a word of prayer, and then we're going to spend some good time in God's word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for life and hope and joy and peace, your word, your Holy Spirit, so many blessings. You tell us in your word that your thoughts toward us are thoughts of peace, and not of evil, and that these thoughts are more than can be numbered. You're always thinking about us. You're always praying for us. You're always providing for us and help us to be buoyed by that joy if we're facing difficult circumstances in our lives right now that we would be encouraged by your heart toward us and your love for us. I pray that you'd bless our time now in your word, help it to be beneficial to us and profitable. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. We live in some exciting days to be Christians. It's an exciting time to be alive in the world. It's an exciting time to be a Christian. Not every Christian believes that. We live in a world that's obviously filled with difficulties. Morally, we live in a world where evil is abounding and it seems like truth is falling in the street and um, you know truth can't get up in the morning and, and make its way uh, throughout the world because it's so oppressed by evil. Politically, we live in a very hateful and polarized and divided society. I think that's obvious to everyone. Physically, we've gone through a worldwide pandemic. Hopefully, we're on the uh, ending side of it. But that physical situation has caused many people to be paralyzed by fear, sometimes literally paralyzed. They won't go outside, sometimes mentally paralyzed. Economically, we look like we may be entering a very difficult time. Inflation is taking hold. Things are more expensive. And a lot of people are filled with anxiety over that, you know, supply and demand issues in many sectors of the economy. The housing issues look like they are, uh, it, depending on where you are and all of that, like we may be at a time where a bubble is going to pop again and the bottom is going to drop out economically. Are we on the precipice of long-term economic disaster? Who knows? Nobody knows for sure. God knows but anyone else is simply guessing. But, but people think that, that we may be entering very difficult times. There are a lot of people that are very nervous. They're very worried and filled with anxiety. A lot of people are starting to stockpile certain things or to sell off certain things. The good news is, as we said, it's a great time to be alive and to be a Christian. The good news is that everything is exactly where God has planned for it to be. People, many people have called this the plandemic that we've gone through because they believe that it was uh, planned in advance by certain people. I will say that it is the plandemic from the perspective that God has planned it. You may not have liked it, but God planned it and God allowed it to happen. He knows exactly uh, the way it's going to turn out because the Bible says in Acts 15, 18, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of of the world. Wonderful truth. Before the world was ever created, God knew everything God knew about the pandemic of 2020, 2021. Uh, and sometimes what we may think is the worst thing ever. Imagine a scenario uh, in your life, your worst nightmare, the, the worst possible scenario. That actually may be a blessing in disguise. It actually may be the way that God is bringing about his will. For your life. Like when Joseph, remember when Joseph was rejected by his brothers, sold into slavery. It was awful. He was distraught. He was crying, the Bible said about this whole thing. But it turns out that this was the means to the best case scenario possible. If he had not been sold into slavery, then things would not have been able to line up so that he could deliver his entire family, which was the Israelite nation in its infancy from starvation in the coming famine. And so the worst case scenario actually was a great blessing in disguise. What they thought for evil, God meant for good. 
And there's an overriding principle in all of this that I want to look at this evening. And by the way, I've entitled the message, Overcoming Uncertainty with Certainty. We live in days that are filled with uncertainty, but as Christians, we also have certainty in many things, and particularly in our God and His Word. So I want to talk about overcoming uncertainty with certainty, and a wonderful principle that I want to look at many times is that no matter what is going on in the world, dark times, difficult days, filled with uncertainty, no matter what is going on in the world, God always takes care of His people. What a comforting and wonderful thought. And it's not just an idea, it is truth. God always takes care of his people. And if you would take your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 24, I want to start by looking at a passage here as the nation of Israel is going to be going into the Babylonian captivity as judgment for sin. Yet there's a remnant of righteous people among them that God was very aware of and that he was going to take care of. So let's read Jeremiah 24, verses 1 through 7. It says, The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord, after that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, So here's what the, the baskets of figs represented. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of his, this place into the land of the Chaldeans, notice this phrase, into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up, and I will give them an heart to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. A horrible situation that was going to befall the nation of Israel, that they were going to be carried away captive to Babylon. 500 miles away from their homeland. But God said a very interesting thing. I'm going to be doing it for many of them for their good. It's actually going to be a good thing. And they're going to be distraught about it in real time. But later they will see. And by the way, those that were left behind in Israel, many of them didn't make it. Nebuchadnezzar came in later and ravaged the land, the temple was destroyed. And so God provided for those. And he said, by the way, when you're carried away to Babylon, seek the peace of the people where you go, because in the peace of that land, you will have peace. And so God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. And then I'm going to bring you back into the land. And when I do, he says, I'm going to re uh, cause you to return unto me with your whole heart. And so God has a way of being aware of his people that know him, that believe in him, and he does things for their good, even though it seems evil and difficult at the time. God knows what he's doing. Look at Exodus chapter 8, and I want to read verses 21 through 23. This is when the nation of Israel is just starting out in the nation of Egypt, and they are going to come out of Egypt in just a moment, but God sends Moses to bring 10 plagues on the nation of Egypt, and for some of the plagues, everyone was affected. When the water was turned to blood, in the whole nation, everyone had their water turned to blood. But there came a dividing line and a turning point in the plagues when God made a difference, a distinction between Israel and Egypt, between his people and the heathen. And so let's read about it in Exodus 8, 21 through 23. It says, Else... If thou wilt not let my people go, 
Behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. So starting with the plague of flies, there was a difference between God's people in the land of Goshen and the rest of Egypt. And it was horrible everywhere. It was nasty and disgusting, and flies were in everything. People would wake up, and flies had uh, slept in their nostrils, and it started to lay. Maybe some people had maggots crawling out of their nose as they woke up in the morning. Everywhere they turned, it was awful and disgusting. But in the land of Goshen, among God's people, Everything was fine. He was providing for them and taking care of them. Here's another example. When God sent the darkness, Exodus 10, verses 22 and 23. It says, And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. God made darkness everywhere, except on his people. He gave them light. He made a division. And uh, again, Israel was affected in some of the earlier plagues, but starting with the flies until the end, they were separated from Egypt in this way. So it, this doesn't mean, what we're talking about this evening, this doesn't mean that God's people will never go through difficulties. Uh, and obviously, all throughout the Bible, we see good people experiencing difficulties. We see the apostles um, greatly oppressed and persecuted and put to death many times. Uh, but the point is that God is aware of his people and when there is difficulty, he will always take care of, provide for, deliver his people. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 and 9, the apostle Paul says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And so even when God brings great difficulty, he still is aware of his people and he will provide for them. He will take care of them. And we don't have to be forsaken and cast down. Remember when God sent a famine on the nation of Israel during the days of Elijah. It was famine everywhere, but God provided for Elijah down by the brook Cherith, he used ravens to feed him, a great miracle. I don't know if I'd want to eat that food that birds brought me, uh, but it's eat and survive or, or starve. Uh, and so God provided for him miraculously till the brook dried up. And then he said, I want you to go to a widow that has nothing. And God provided for his man, Elijah, through a widow who had nothing. And first of all, God provided for the widow miraculously. She, she was about to starve to death because of the famine, but then God provided a miracle, and then God used that to provide for Elijah. And God always takes care of his people. So you may be in your own personal life. We look around at our national situation. We look around at the world, and there may be very dark days ahead. But don't worry as a Christian. Don't be perplexed. Don't be discouraged, because God will take care of you. Matthew 28 talks about God's care for birds. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, and, and by the way, don't fear a pandemic, or don't fear an economic downturn. Don't fear anything except for God. It says, But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. I think we could accurately say that one human 
is of more value than all the sparrows. God loves us and God's children, God's people, he loves us. And if he's going to take care of the birds, then he's going to take care of us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to worry, be filled with anxiety with all that's going around us. We are going to be okay. And so real fast, I just want to have two brief thoughts. First of all, God makes it so that we can be okay on the inside, that mentally, emotionally, spiritually, we are going to be okay. Here's how to do it. To be okay on the inside, just trust God and pray. It's very simple. It's not always easy with the things that we face, but it is very simple and it is true and it is accurate. And here's what God says in Philippians 4. By the way, so Philippians chapter 4 shows us how we can be taken care of inside and out. First of all, it starts with the inside. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. That means don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Everything with thanksgiving that God's going to answer. And if you do this, then verse 7 comes in. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that's what we need first and foremost in these dark days. We need our minds and our hearts to be guarded from anxiety and worry and fear and doubt. Because once the devil brings doubt in our minds, once we lack faith in God, he's got us. We've stepped away. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And if the devil can cause us to doubt God, then he's got us and, and he's pulled us away. But if you pray and trust God, God will keep your heart in mind. You'll be filled with peace. You'll be taken care of on the inside. Another wonderful verse, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. It says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. How do you have peace in life? It's not through a bottle. It's not through pills. It's not through drink. It's not through circumstances being easy. Peace is found in trusting in God. It's a reward that God gives his people for trusting in him, for believing in him. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. So to be okay on the inside, just trust God and pray about everything. And number two, to be okay on the outside, we just simply need to be righteous and faithful to God. We can guarantee how to have enough in life. I love that the Bible does this for us. I love that God does this for us. He doesn't just throw us out there as Christians on our own and say, okay, figure it out. You know, you're saved, so you're on your own now. He gives us a blueprint about how to make it, how to have enough physically. How do you make sure that you're taken care of on the outside. Psalm 37, verse 25, the psalmist says this, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The righteous will never be forsaken. So how do you make sure you have enough? You be righteous, you do right, you walk with God, be holy in this world. Psalm 84, 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So how do you make sure that you have every good thing that you need in life, that no good thing is ever withheld? You simply walk uprightly. You do right. It is in your power, it is in my power to make sure I have enough. If I do my part, then God will give me everything that I need. I don't have to worry. I, I don't have to figure out my situation. God will figure it out if I'm righteous. And then a similar verse, Philippians chapter four. So Philippians four, we talked about how to be taken care of on the inside is pray and trust God. How to be taken care of on the outside is to live righteously and to be generous with your, with your money, with uh, the wherewithal God has given you. Listen to Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. It says, Paul speaking, 
But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. In other words, the church at Philippi had blessed Paul financially. They had generously given to him. And because of that, verse 19 says this, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So the blueprint here is that they gave to Paul, they gave to God's man through Paul to Paul, and Paul said, God is going to give to you all that you need. So the way to guarantee that you'll have enough is to trust God and pray and to be generous. When you see someone have a need, you give to them. You give to God, give to his work. And if you do that, God promises to take care of all your needs. So many times in days of fear and uncertainty, the people of God the world does this, but even the people of God will respond by saying, what I need to do to face the future, or what I need is more money. If I have more money, if I have enough money, then I will be secure. And they try to find their security in money. And so they say things like, well, maybe I need to give less to God or give less to others during this time so I can make sure I have enough for me. And maybe I need to work another job. Maybe I need to get another job on the weekends and I may have to miss church, but if I get another job and make more money, then I can make sure I have enough to make it through these days of uncertainty or to provide for my future, to store up for my retirement, to make sure I have enough. I just need more money, whatever it takes. Maybe I need to pull back from my commitment to God. Maybe I need to pull back from money and time that I'm giving to God. No, don't pull back push forward. Because as you give, God will give to you. As you give more, as you are more faithful to God, God will promise to take care of all of your needs. Don't get it backward. Don't try to take care of yourself, but humble yourself before God and he will take care of you. He'll make sure you have enough for you and your family and all that you need. The way to make sure you have enough is to walk with God. Be righteous and faithful and generous, and God will take care of all your needs. And you may even see that you, that this difficult scenario, that this nightmare you may face could be a blessing in disguise, could be the best thing ever, because God will work all things together for good to them that love him and the called according to his purpose. In the face of uncertainty, and difficult circumstances, don't worry, but overcome that uncertainty with certainty. If there are things that you don't know about the future, uh, how am I going to make sure that I have enough? How am I going to make it? That's uncertain. But the certain things are, if you walk with God, if you do right, if you're holy, if you're generous, God will take care of all of your needs. And that certainty can overcome the uncertainty. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I know it's going to turn out okay because God is in control. The Bible says that death is swallowed up of life one day. So why don't we make sure that uncertainty is swallowed up of certainty? And let's give it to God. I want to finish by reading the words of a famous hymn, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me in the path that is my portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know he holds my hand. There is a great uncertainty in the world around us, but there's also a great certainty. God already knows everything the way it's gonna turn out and he's promised to provide for you. God takes care of his people. So be one of his people that walks with him, that trusts him, that prays about everything, and that is generous. And it is impossible for you to not have enough.
I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. God takes care of his people. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for these promises. We need them. On our own, we would fail. We can't do anything. We have no wisdom. We have no answers. But we know where the answers are found. They're found in you. And I pray that you would help us to bring all of our uncertainties to you and that your certainties would flow over us and calm our spirits. Help us to be peaceful on the inside because of our trust in prayer. And we know that we'll be taken care of on the outside if we are righteous. Help us to be upright in all of our ways and just to walk with you. Thank you for these promises and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whatever you face this week that may be uncertain, take the certain answer of Jesus with you. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. If you have made a decision to follow God in some way or would like prayer, let us know at flbc at cox.net. We would love to connect with you, pray for you, or send you some resources that can help you in your walk with God. If you would like to know more about how to go to heaven, visit us at folbaptist.com slash heaven. If you would like to give financially to support our ministry, you can do so at folbaptist.com slash give. Thank you and God bless you.